Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and this is another uh, popcorn mango video for you guys. And today I want to give my brief thoughts on Batman the Killing Joke, which is one of the most highly requested adaptations of any source material I can I can think of in quite some time and, and it's one that I've been looking forward to for many years now because I am a fan of the graphic novel and I was very very excited when they announced that this was finally gonna get the DC original movies treatment with Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker which is really the only way it should be so um, and I find, and I actually didn't just get back from seeing this, you know me, I like to give my thoughts, like, right out of the theater, or right out of whatever. I actually saw this on, uh, Saturday or Friday, I don't really remember, one of, one of those days, and, uh, it's kind of been just gelling, kind of, like, sitting in my brain for a couple of days, I've been thinking about it more and more. I actually wrote an essay about it. Um, I'm not, probably not going to link to it. It's just for my my personal Facebook friends. But uh, so <laughs> I guess I'll start with um, I think this is one of the most disappointing movies of 2016. Probably maybe the most disappointing because they had one simple job over at DC. Bruce Tim and all the other guys out there, they had one simple job. All they had to do was take panel for panel, shot for shot, line for line, and do an adaptation of The Killing Joke with Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. That's all they had to do. It's all you gotta do. And it still would have had the same problems as the book. It would have been, you know, like like one of Batgirl's worst hours. Like, like I, I'm, I'm not somebody that's you know, like, outraged by Batgirl's treatment in the graphic novel, but I'm not a fan of it either. I, I think it is problematic, to say the least. So, they had a good opportunity to... If they, they had two things they could have done that I think would have pleased a lot of people. A, do just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of The Killing Joke, and just have all the lines and all the, the events be, like, panel-per-panel -panel remake. Or B you know, extend on the whole Batgirl thing. Show, after the ending, show uh, Batgirl's side of it, where Barbara Gordon becomes Oracle, and you get to see her rise to, to overcoming this, this horrible, horrible assault and tragedy, and finding the inner strength to become, you know, like a new person, practically, and to live again. And what sucks is that they did neither. Uh, they did probably the worst thing they could have done with this series, with this this um, with this adaptation. And in their attempts to quote humanize Batgirl, that's their words, not mine. Humanize Batgirl. They've actually made it worse. Like all the the weird sexist shit that happens in the Killing Joke, it's worse in this this movie adaptation. So let me get to why I think that is. So, they made a big deal about having this big 30-minute prologue about, you know, showing Batgirl and, how, like, he, fleshing out Batgirl and stuff like that. So, one, it doesn't work with The Killing Joke. It feels like com two completely different movies, tonally and thematically, smushed together to try to create this narrative bridge to the killing joke and it doesn't work and not only does it not work individually when you look at this as a Batgirl movie it, it doesn't work it is too sloppy it's really disturbing like in a bad way it makes Batgirl look like shit and it just it doesn't work because it's just weird and out of place and and then as a narrative bridge to the killing joke it recontextualizes the whole Batman versus Super I almost said Batman versus Superman. Batman versus Joker a uh, fight into something much more mean and ugly and, and not fun to watch because as someone asked when I put my essay up, they asked, you know, besides the Batgirl stuff, 
did you like anything else about the movie? And yes, while I do, I it's a given at this point that Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are going to fucking kill it as Batman and Joker. And that that really is not anything surprising. Uh, I think the like just in the pure visual sense, I think it's cool how they re, you know, like they show the Killing Joke panel per panel in some situations. It's not they're not always consistent with it. But when they do, it is really cool. However, this whole thing about having Barbara Gordon, now that Barbara Gordon, and I'm going to get into spoiler territory with The Killing Joke. If you haven't heard about what happens in this prologue, then tune out now. Uh, so basically what happens in this prologue is that Batgirl is under Batman's wing. And Batman kind of treats her like shit, like a, like a big burden. Uh, Batgirl finds herself sexually, romantically attracted to Batman because of the fighting, I guess? I, they don't, like, fully explain it, but it's it's vaguely hinted at that Barbara Gr Gordon is attracted to Batman because it, it brings out, like a, like, a sexual thrill between them when they're fighting, which, you know, could be interesting. And Alan Moore has shown this kind of... Uh, fetishism like some in something like Watchmen where Night Owl and Silk, Silk Spectre get off and have sex after beating people up and saving people and being superheroes like he in in the in the comic book and in the movie he can't get an erection like just as like a romantic thing he he can only get it up and start fucking Silk Spectre when like he is doing superhero stuff so that is like a fetish for him and that's kind of vaguely what they do with this whole Batgirl thing. It's just, it's a it's a weird little thing. Um, and then Batgirl decides not to be Batgirl anymore because she nearly beats a crime boss to death um, who's, who's, you know, like, sexually harassing her and is, like, sort of in love with her. Nearly beats him to death. So I guess that's the whole point of, like, oh, well, I'm no longer Batgirl anymore. Because I'm too disturbed by what I'm going to become, so I'm not going to do that anymore. So, so this whole attempt to humanize Batgirl, it's like, well, you're just making her look more miserable. And to me, that's not a humanization of somebody. Making somebody look human and giving them like my more more sympathy and stuff like that, and where they earn that that character development like I said, would be after the shooting, after the paralysis, where we get to see Barbara Gordon go through that that rise to being Oracle. That, to me, would have been much more interesting. That would have been more powerful. Not, hey, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have sex with Batman on a rooftop. That, that happens, by the way. I'm going to have sex with Batman on a rooftop so he can be the the regretful lover role and ignore me and then i'll beat a crime boss to death because batman rejected me after having sex with him so i'll stop being batgirl so i'll i'll get shot and paralyzed as barbara gordon see how how weird this all sounds and how like and the sad part is this could have been avoided they didn't have to do any of this they could have just simply remade the killing joke panel per panel line for line release it as a short for free or for like 99 cents or, or whatever the only reason i see this this like batgirl prologue is that it, it's there just to pad it out to uh, over an hour just so they can release it as a movie and charge like 20 bucks for it which don't fucking pay 20 bucks for this shit are you kidding me so so it it doesn't work this whole Batgirl thing and then once she's paralyzed we never see her again in the movie besides a scene where Batman goes to the hospital and is told that she'll never walk again so yay yay for that and it's like it's like oh well now we're going to be faithful to the graphic novel now we're going to be faithful we weren't faithful before we're adding a bunch of unnecessary shit to it now we're going to be faithful and now we're going to be like oh well 
Bye, bye, Batgirl. You were you were fine. You you served your purpose now that you're paralyzed. Oh, moving on to Batman and Joker, and then having having Joker's origin story in this, it just there's just something off about it. There's there's something off seeing this like this this like sympathetic portrayal of the Joker. I don't know about sympathetic, but you see the the rise of the Joker. You see the birth of the Joker, and yes, they do this too in the graphic novel after him shooting Barbara Gordon and paralyzing her. That was like one thing. That that origin story shit was not followed up after like 30 minutes of Batgirl misery porn, of just her going through stupid, depressing shit, and then having it the, the focus entirely shift to the Joker and Batman, and it just... It doesn't work. If they wanted to do a Batgirl origin story, fine. Do that as a separate movie and have that be its own thing. Get better writing in there because it does it, it's shit by itself. It's not a good opening. It left a bad taste in my mouth going into the, the, the killing joke stuff. Which, by itself, could have been really special. By itself, because, like I said, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill... They bring their fucking A-plus game to this shit. Because this is a project they have wanted to do for years. Years and years and years. And it shows. Because they do complete justice to Alan Moore's text here. And it just doesn't work. Because you have this Batgirl shit. And I know a lot of people are... You guys are probably going to think I'm putting way too much emphasis on this Batgirl, Batgirl thing. On this Batgirl prologue. But... Having it be there, and having it be as long as it is, and how they try to blend it tonally and thematically with the kill the, the Alan Moore stuff, it doesn't work. It feels off. It feels wrong. It just... It, it, it creates this weird disconnect between the original material and Alan Moore's text. It's this thematic disconnect where you have you spend the first 30 minutes focusing on one character focusing on her downfall and her not wanting to be Batgirl anymore then you paralyze her and then the focus goes entirely to the Joker and Batman and I don't give a shit if they show Oracle you know Barbara Gordon being Oracle like oh well I'm okay I'm, I'm in a wheelchair now but I'm okay during the like like a mid credit scene it I don't care I don't give a shit about a mid credit scene. A short little mid credit scene isn't going to fix the, the very huge problems with the killing joke. So, and then they have this weird thing where they want, they like briefly get into the Joker's sex life, which is not in the killing joke. So we got to have this thing where the, where it's referenced that the Joker might have, might have raped Barbara Gordon. It, it's like, Ugh, and 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 I, you know, I and if you've heard about like the Batman, Batgirl sex scene on the roof, I'm not gonna get too much into that because it should be fairly obvious why that's wrong on so many levels. Like why? I, I, don't, I don't know why that was in there. I know they made an excuse about oh well, we wanted to show these guys as adults. We wanted to show them making mistakes as adults, and I could. I guess if I if I'm gonna walk with you to that to that to that path, I can somewhat accept that excuse. I guess it, in a better movie, I could have accepted that excuse for Batgirl, not for Batman. There is no way Batman would have had sex with Batgirl, knowing that that is Barbara Gordon. He knows he knows full well that is Barbara Gordon. If he didn't already. He did while he was fucking her because she took off the mask, took off her top, and they start fucking. So, that I, that feels, to me, feels like totally out of character for Batman. And it's this, it, I guess it's this weird thing where they have to come in and be like edgy and dark. And they have to, they, it's like, it's like Arkham Knight where they have the M rating, or in this case they have the R rating... They don't really have anything that takes it to that extreme where it's like a hard M or a hard R. I mean, it's R-rated. You see people get shot in the head with, like, blood flying out. But that happens in the, 
the more there are PG-13. Like if you want to talk to strictly gore, there are PG-13 DC animated movies that are far gorier than The Killing Joke. And this being rated R, it feels more like a marketing stunt than something like genuinely dark and edgy. And they felt like they just had to add those rape the like the rape subtext and the 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 fact that the Joker fucks hookers when he comes out of prison and 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 the sex scene it's just it's just so bizarre it's 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 baffling why they did this because it was such an easy job he had one fucking job guys one simple job just remake batman killing joke as a cartoon that's it that's all you gotta do you don't have to add this other shit in there who fucking cares if it's PG-13? That's fine. Make it good. So, yeah, would I... And I guess this begs the question, I guess, would I recommend Batman the Killing Joke? Um, I, I guess, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, there is, there are good things in this movie. There are great things in the Killing Joke, and it's why I don't strongly dislike it. I don't like it, but... I don't hate it either. I I think there is merit here. I would recommend it just for if you just just skip that entire 30 minute prologue. Just don't watch it. Just just get to the point where they start doing the killing joke. Just imagine in your head that it's a short movie. And then just enjoy it for Mark Hamill's like one of his very best performances as the as the Joker. One of Kevin Conroy's very best performances as Batman. And you got Tara Strong in there, who, poor Tara Strong, she's such a good voice actor, and she's, she is totally wasted on this, this crappy script for, for Batgirl and Barbara Gordon. So, I, I, I slightly recommend it just for the voice acting, just for Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, I guess. I mean, you might as well just, they, they, it's been forever, taking forever to get a Killing Joke movie, so... You might as well enjoy what's good and just just ignore the stuff that ruins the the Alan Moore stuff. So, yeah, I've gone on longer than I usually do, but yeah, this is just one of those ones that I need to talk about more in depth because I'm just disappointed. I'm just really, it's it's a great shame because they had they could have done something really great with this and they blew it and they did it in like the worst way they could have so nice job guys this this i mean it's still the best dc animated movie this year is the is batman bad blood and it's, it's a it's a really awesome batman story if you want to watch a really awesome batman story don't watch the killing joke go watch batman bad blood bad blood is awesome so yeah anyway Thank you guys for watching. If you like to see, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Killing Joke movie if you've seen it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, guys. Take care.